What's going on guys, this is RJ here with my first ever episode on my first ever little show type thing I'm putting on YouTube. It's called Football Talk with RJ. And basically what I'm going to be t talking about is, you know, NFL news, NFL teams, anything NFL, uh, college football, you want to hear about college football, or even you got questions about the game itself. You know, different position problem, like how to play quarterback, how to do running back, any anything like that. You know, send me a comment on the video, future videos, my channel, inbox, you know, just whatever you want to discuss, I'll, I'll see what I can do, maybe I'll just answer you personally, maybe I'll make a video on it, who knows. And um, to start off this episode, I figured why not talk about the big thing everybody was talking about this soft season, and that's the Philadelphia Eagles, you know, being compared to, the, as like the Miami Heat of the football world. And I gotta say, man, Eagles, whew, it's, it's just wow. Um, I don't want to talk too much about the NFL draft, or well, their draft, because it's mainly talking about the free agent acquisitions they made. But um, I will talk about the first round pick, Danny Watkins, the guard out of Baylor. Um, I do love the pick. He's a very talented lineman, good footwork, good everything. But um, the only issue I have with it is they took a first round pick on a guy who's 26, 27 years old, something like that. I mean, to be a rookie and be 26, 27, that's ridiculous. I mean, they're probably going to get maybe 8 solid years out of them when they should be getting 10 to 12. But you know what? It's a good pick. You know, you got to take what you got to take. Alright, next up, the first big move of the offseason for the Eagles was that huge Kevin Cobb trade. Um, and after I saw that, I think Andy Reid should be arrested, <laughs> personally. I mean, he stole, he, he just flat out stole a Pro Bowl top-notch corner and a second round pick to go with it. For a guy who was just going to sit the bench the entire year, and he's a mediocre quarterback anyway, it's just I, I can't believe that. I mean, everybody's talking about oh Kevin Cobb's going to be great. He's going to be in Arizona. He's going to win that division. You know what? Yeah, he probably is. But look at that division. What does he have to compete with? And plus, you give him Larry Fitzgerald. I'm sure he's going to do. He's going to put up. A, a, some sort of numbers, but when he was in Philly, I mean, not like he played that much, well, because he sucked. But I mean, I mean, look at his numbers. His touchdown interception ratio was at deadlock. I think he went seven and seven. Um, I believe he has a losing record as a starter. Don't hold me to it. I'm pretty sure though. Um, I probably should have had that stat ready, but what are you going to do? Uh, I think Kevin Cobb's mediocre. I'm totally against Cobb. You know, I think he's going to be I mean, not like he was as good in college, but he could be like a David Klingler. You know, the big time Houston quarterback goes in the NFL, total bust. Um, maybe, who knows, we'll just have to see. And next up, we're going to talk about their free agent signings. And the big one I like is Jason Babin. Uh, he's a huge signing, a critical signing. Helps out with the pass rush, which is one of the main things to be a successful team in the NFL. Um, he had 12 sacks last year at Tennessee. And yeah, I know, for those of you who know anything about football, oh, well, Jason Babin... You know, he only had one year with double-digit sacks. He's 31 years old. Yeah, but think about this. He was at Tennessee. Who else is pass rushing in Tennessee? No one. That's just him. Who's playing D-tackle in Tennessee? Oh, I don't know. D-tackles aren't clogging up the gaps. They're not clogging up the middle. It's just him doing all the work by himself, pass rushing off that one side. And about the age thing, you know, yeah, he is 31, but I listened to an interview with him, and you know, he 
based and they said um, you know you're 31 years old but what are you going to do with the Eagles how are you going to contribute and he basically just said you know oh excuse me he just said like yeah I, I am 31 but you know I do all these health um, diets and um, he's saying how he's in the hyperbolic chamber a lot and it really helps out the body so he may be 31 but he can play like he's 26 you know it's no big deal for him I, th I think he's a great signing for the Eagles and next up got a little pair going here I'm calling the Lees you have Johnny Lee Higgins and Donald Lee um, Johnny Lee Higgins never was a great wide receiver but he played for Oakland so you know he's got raw athletic talent because that's the only thing Al Davis goes for over there um, so he, he's a quick guy all that and then Donald Lee I love this dude he's he's older now so he's at the end of his career but um, I've seen him play in Green Bay and I've seen him play in Miami and that dude he's never been the star tight end but he's great pass catcher great pass catcher and, you know him and Brent Selleck if you go in a double tight end set both send them you can send them both out there for a pass you'll be one of them's gonna come down with it all right moving on next signing Vince Young and everybody says oh he's immature he's you know he's never gonna be a starter anytime soon blah 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 I to say he's not a starter I think that's a bunch of BS per personally I mean look he can go to Cincinnati he can go to Washington I'm sure he can win a job at Buffalo heck maybe even Miami Miami did give him a look I don't know why they didn't pursue it you know Vince Young he, he's a winner him and Michael Vick are winners and it, this is a huge signing by Andy Reid because you know if Michael Vick were to ever get hurt this season you got somebody backing him up who can do the same exact thing plays the same exact style and I don't know how you can get over that alright next up the one y'all been waiting for the Namdi Asamoah trade or not trade the signing my bad and um you know, it, it was so confusing when it first started out because it was like, oh, the Jets are the front runner. You know, that didn't surprise me. It's Rex Ryan trying to make the big news. You know, then all of a sudden, nope, Jets are out, Texans are up. All right, so now I go to work, come back, and I watch a little ticker at the bottom of the screen saying, Houston Texans have agreed the terms with. I'm like, oh, they got Namdi? Nope, they got Jonathan Joseph. I was like, wow. And then they wait for the next show, and they're like, "All right, the Jets are the front runner again." Nope, now it's the Cowboys. So then I go to work again, come back. Oh, Eagles signed them. What? And that it's just so amazing what the Eagles are doing. You know, you got three elite cornerbacks. Well, I don't know if you say they're all elite, but very, very high up there. You got Asante. You got Namdi, and you got Cromartie. I don't know how you can compete with that. And, you know, there's a lot of speculation saying, oh, well, they're going to trade Asante. Asante's making $5 million this year. And in the NFL, that's very cheap. So you can keep Asante, Namdi, and Cromartie all for at least one year. They might keep Asante for two. Who knows? But I think they should definitely keep him for this year have three great cornerbacks and um, I, it's just that secondary is going to be great you know you got a rookie coming out of the draft playing it might be playing at safety who knows but you know it, it's the Eagles are going to be scary and then I find out yesterday Ronnie Brown running back from the Dolphins got picked up by the Eagles I think that that's one of my favorite signings that they made. Ronnie Brown, 
He's always been part of a one-two punch. He can't be that solo back. You know, Auburn, him and Cadillac Williams. Miami, him and Ricky. And now it's going to be him and LaShawn McCoy. Two athletic backs. Ronnie has a little bit more power. But he's still very quick. LaShawn's very quick. Great pass catcher out of the backfield. And who knows, maybe the Eagles want to try some Wildcat. I mean, you got Michael Vick. You got Vince Young if you want to throw him in there. Ronnie Brown's the expert at the Wildcat for the NFL. It's just amazing the options they have now. And, you know, after all that, they lot, everybody wants to say, well, all the Super Bowl winning teams, the Saints, the Steelers, the Packers, the Patriots, the Colts, you know, they never became a Super Bowl winning team by being the winners of the offseason. So that leads me to believe, can the Eagles do it? I mean, it's, it's, you look at what they have, how can you stop that? I, I, I don't know how. I mean, yeah, they're going to lose a couple games in the regular season, but I don't, playoffs, I don't know, man. I think they might take it. Or, or definitely make the Super Bowl. I, th I have a feeling. I don't write it down officially, but I have a feeling. So I'm going to leave you guys with a question. You know, being the winners of the off season, could that also lead it to being a winner of a Super Bowl? Who knows? Um, like I said earlier, if you have any questions, any comments, anything, comment the video, comment my channel, um, send me an inbox message. Um, if there's any team, any other teams you want me to review the off season for, go ahead, leave a suggestion. It don't matter to me. Um, you know, I should be coming out with more episodes. I don't know what specific days. It's probably just going to happen at random. Or whenever there's a big headline. So, this is RJ. This is Football Talk with RJ. And I hope you, all, you guys enjoy the video. Thank you and keep tuning in.